This is a Fiat Multipler. And any normal person, upon discovering that there's less than 70 of these in New Zealand, wouldn't be the least bit surprised. Who in their right mind, when looking for a people mover back in the late 90s, would turn down a mid-engine Plydia or VTEC Odyssey or heck, even a Toyota Picnic for one of these? Embodying every undesirable trait in a car, piano casters for wheels with sponge tyres delivering woeful handling, unpainted bumpers hiding a face not even a mother-in-law could love, the biggest window to body ratio known to man and an engine with the power of four harnessed children. You would have to have some screws loose to buy one of these new back in 1998, but someone did and now 25 years on we're here to see if it's still the worst car in the world. The engine is an absolute powerhouse. A 1.6 litre, phenomenally double cam, 16 valve, four cylinder engine. It's probably one of genuinely the least powerful engines I've ever reviewed on the channel. It makes 76 kilowatt or 102 horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque. But staggeringly, every single multipler was paired with either this 1.6 or a 1.9 turbo diesel and a five speed manual transmission. I've always had a theory that if a car doesn't make much power, but if it has a manual gearbox, it kind of makes up for it. If it had a slush box four-speed auto, I would not be remotely interested in driving something like this. But with a manual, it'll be really interesting to see how it goes. And of course, no surprises there, it is front-wheel drive. Believe it or not, this car has done nearly 300,000 kilometers. It has already had an engine replacement and a new clutch put in. But to get that far, I mean, hey, it can't be that unreliable. Doug DeMiro would be absolutely fizzing at the sight of all of the quirks and features inside the Fiat Multipler. Even the door handles are unusual, made of a rock climbing wall looking material that of course, after 300,000 Ks, looks like a teenager's face. The steering wheel is made of such a poor quality material that not a single trace of texture is left on it. The gauges consist of two, a speedo and fuel. It does show the clock, does show the odometer and your trip distance with a little tiny screen down the bottom. The climate control, if you can even call it that, consists of manual rotary knobs with horrible feeling toggle switches up here on the top of the dash for your fog lights and your rear demister. All of the vents have the most unusual control surfaces to turn them on and off and the owner of this one has made use of its unusual shape by putting googly eyes on it. And then we come to the storage. There's a bin underneath the passenger seat. There are two dashboard mounted glove boxes along with places to put things underneath the steering wheel and in the passenger footwell along with cup holders on top of the third seat here in the middle. And yes, this is a six seater car with all six seats in place. I imagine with its 70 kilowatt at its disposal it will be the slowest car known to man but it certainly makes for a really practical vehicle and the boot space is not half bad either. You can even fold all of the seats down to create a massive bed by removing the headrest and laying all of the seats flat and then <laughs> like the sun visor when you put it down it covers half the mirror so you literally cannot see out the back if your passenger is getting blinded by the sun. Truly it is one of the most unusual interiors that I have ever sat in. Everything is just gopping to look at. But now let's see if the driving experience is as terrible as the rest of the car. Well, I just got out of driving a FD2 Civic Type R, one of the most raw and involving manual transmission vehicles on planet Earth. And now we're in the multiplier. You know, I'm not gonna lie, it's quicker than I expected, probably because everything's just made of cheese and old cardboard boxes. The body roll is unbelievable. Third gear, foot down. The speedo's not moving. The gear change is appalling. Drop down to second, heel toe. Probably the first time this car's ever been heel toed. Turn it in, the front end just does absolutely nothing. The seats are horribly uncomfortable. The interior is rattling to know tomorrow. The body roll is some of the worst I think I've ever had in any car. It's kind of weird where it's like a hatchback, but because it's kind of jacked up and you sit so unbelievably high in it, oh, losing traction, it, it still just leans. 
an unbelievable amount. There's no tachometer, so I have no idea what the engine's doing. I'm basically just winding it out until I think I'm about to hit rev limiter. But there are some good points. You would expect this to be one of the worst driving cars imaginable. And it actually really is not. It feels faster than it should be. So I think it makes 76 kilowatt. But 60, 70, 80. It's certainly not fast, but it does accelerate, which is impressive. Obviously, the handling is really bad, but surprisingly, the steering feel is actually okay. You can kind of tell what the front end's doing. And when you get it up to some speed, yeah, the body roll is horrendous, but it will actually like hold on surprisingly well. It's quite fun to drive, I must say, because it's so comically bad, but certain parts of it are still good. Good gear change. You can heel toe, the engine responds immediately. Down into second, put down, up into third. Like, look at that, you can hammer through gears. Obviously, this is not a car that I would ever consider buying, but it has genuinely surprised me at how not horrendous it is. Fiat's actually done a pretty decent job at making this comically ugly and really tall, ungainly vehicle tear up a back road with a smile on my face. Put down, hard on the brakes, turn it in. Oh, we're starting to get a bit of brake fade. The understeer is, is not good. And look, this is an FD2 Civic Type R. And I know he's just kind of cruising, but whoa. And we just hit a duck. Oh. Oh no, he's all right. There he goes. <laughs> that duck did not get out of the way in a hurry, man. Lots of web limit. There it is. 90 k's an hour. <laughs> Thanks very much for watching. And I'll look forward to seeing you again next time. Feast three years upon Fiat 1.6. Into second. That's not bad, man. Not half bad. Oh my word. Awesome.